Hi everyone. Hi. 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 So um, I'm here with uh, Sani. What we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about document accessibility and also just accessibility in general. And how we're going to set this up is that I have some uh, questions for um, Sani and we'll go over some of them and then we'll have Sani uh, respond. She's really the star here. I'm like, it's, <laughs> as uh, Ted mentioned, I'm really just the co-pilot. And uh, what we'll do at the end uh, as well is just show you some um, documents um, so that you can have a look uh, to see you know, what's accessible, what's not. Um, and as an end user, uh, such as Sani, how she receives the document. So um, with that, I can go ahead and get started. Uh, um, are you ready, Sani? Yes, awesome. I'm ready. Awesome. OK. So Sani, tell us about yourself. Hi, my name is Sani Zainakvi. I'm an international student from South Asia and Nigeria. Uh, I, um, I love to study. I have the love of learning. I am a social service student at Newham campus. I, I want to be studying and looking for a part-time job and have to and wish to do other programs in Newham in the future. What are some of the, your short and long-term goals? Um, my short-term goals is to study and to look for a job and my long-term goal is to do other programs such as studying behavior sciences or other programs at Seneca. Right. Um, do you want to tell us about your a little bit about your vision uh, to the extent that you're comfortable? Uh, I have low vision. I, I can see a little bit, but it gets blurry at times. Um, I use uh, I use Jaws and Jaws is a screen reader which reads to me. It tells me whatever is on the computer. I use a reader and scribe. A reader, a reader slash scribe is someone who sp tells me what's on the paper or read documents to me. And I use my memory most of the time to work. And I mostly do a lot of active listening. So you mentioned a little bit about a reader scribe. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because that's one of the accommodations that we have. So we have the screen reader, which is what um, what Sandy has, has mentioned. You want to talk about reader scribe when you might use one? A reader, I use a reader scribe during uh, my test. It, uh, I use uh, a reader scribe is someone, a sighted person who comes in and read the questions. For example. Uh, multiple choice questions or true and false questions and they tell me what the options are and then they tick off my options for me. Right. So now ideally if the document was accessible you, you wouldn't need a, a reader or a, or a scribe, is that correct? Yes, if the document has check boxes or maybe uh, a little space beside the multiple choice it will be it will be pretty easy to put any letter in them. Right. So I, I think having gone through and writing some of the tests, I think you've mentioned before that one way that you've done it in the past is um, to get a, a document that's accessible, and then the document will be read to you uh, by a screen reader. So that in it, in itself would be the, the job of uh, let's say a reader. So that's the screen reader job. Yes. And then in terms of scribing, you know how to type. So which means that you would type in, um, a, like type in, a, uh, you know, in, a, in case of a multiple choice that you mentioned, type in A or B or, or whatever the response is. Yes. Um, whereas currently, right now, um, if we're using multiple choice with the Scantron. You're basically asked to, you know, fill in little bubbles with with, uh, with a pencil, right? Yes. So that is going to be difficult. You need a scribe. Uh, you need the sighted person to shade. So which is very complicated. Yeah. So all of that can be kind of avoided if we have accessible um, documents, because not only is it is it a matter of um, you know using a reader scribe, relying on somebody else, but the fact that you have to kind of then coordinate the schedule, make sure the reader scribe is there, make sure they're not late, you know, work work at the, make sure that they, um, you know, know the know how to use the test center and all, all of that stuff. So if we have an accessible document, that that is an example where we can avoid some of the some of the complications that we would have to go through. So Sandy, when I first reached out to you to do this um, presentation, you were very excited. Um, can you tell me why you you were you were so excited? I was really excited because. Uh, I love to learn from people and explain to people uh, what assessive documents are because some 
some people have a lack of knowledge concerning uh, excessive documents. And in the past, I have I had professors where they didn't know about excessive documents, and I had to demonstrate to them how to make the documents accessible for me. Um, so you, you said you, some of the technologies you mentioned were um, use, the use of a, a screen reader. Um, so that is ex an example of what's called a site substitution technology. Do you want to just go over the difference for the audience, the difference between site enhancement technology and site substitution technology? The site enhancement technology is the CCTV, um, the magnifiers. Uh, there are technologies which are being used by someone who can see a little bit and they're able to do a large print or maybe a bigger print for them to see while a sighted, um, substitutional. sighted substitutional technology are screen readers such as uh, job access with speech, voiceover by Apple, uh, Zoom text by Mac, and the other bunch of screen readers which are accessible. Right. Such as like MEDA? Uh, yes. Yeah. And so when you mention site enhancement, so just to kind of summarize, site enhancement technology would be for uh, individuals with residual vision that is uh, primarily looking at magnifying uh, what's on the screen. There could be different types of settings you can have on a, on a, uh, a screen magnifier as well, such as flipping the contrast, um, helping you figure out where the mouse is on, on the screen. Now, as a as a in Sani's uh, case, um, do you use a mouse, Sani? No, I don't use a mouse. I just use the shortcuts on the computer. Right. Um, so in Sani's case, um, she uses a um, different types of keystrokes. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about JAWS? I mean, you mentioned what JAWS is, um, but uh, it would be good to just get a, a, a quick explanation of like what keystrokes you, you commonly use and how you actually navigate a, a, a document. So I use I use Job Access with Speech, which is a screen reader. It, it tells me what's on the screen. So if I want to go to desktop, I just do Windows T. If I want to open up a document, I press the name of the document, and I press enter, and I'm in the document, and then I do, I press JAWS key plus down arrow, or to go to read the whole document, to just glance through the document as fast as I can. And if I want to jump to something within the document, I do, I press H, or N, or J, so these are the different uh, keystrokes. So as you can imagine, um, if you are on your uh, computer, and the example I usually like to give is um, try to put away your mouse and turn off the monitor and try to navigate. So Sani's a real expert at this. So we're going to um, get Sani to um, show us uh, some documents. That um, First, we'll, we'll start off with showing the um, inaccessible PDF document. And then we'll um, show the um, accessible, a little bit more accessible PDF document and then a Word document. Oh, okay, so I'll just go to the desktop by pressing Windows D. Windows D. And then I'll just press number one. Folder view list one dash and accessible PDF example checked. This is the inaccessible document. In order colon combo box and for reading order of escape. As so you maximize the Okay. What space? Boxes. So this this document is inaccessible. It's just a scan Land. document and it's not reading by a screen Land. reader. Land. So um, it's inaccessible by by my screen reader. As you can see on the screen, there is something, but uh, Jaws is not reading anything. It just says Land. empty Land. document or clang on it. Now, Sani, why do you suppose this document is, is not accessible? Um, you mean that it, and how it was created? It, it's the way it is being created. It, uh, it's not scanned properly. It's, it's not in a Word. It's, it's not in a Word document. It's just snapped and sent in a way. So that's why it's unreadable yeah. by um, PDF reader. 
So this was a document that was basically a printout, and it was just scanned in without any sort of um, OCR, optical character recognition. And so it's, this document itself is, is, is an entire image. So that's why there's no way that Sandy would be able to access this with, uh, with JAWS. Desktop. Windows D. Under view list view. Two dash accessible PDF editor. So open I opened, text. I went to the desktop again and I pressed but two, which is being labeled as um, accessible PDF, which is more better than the first one I displayed. And accessible PDF example with PDF. Two and accessible. this one is readable, it's accessible, it has a bunch of headings on it. PDF not. And I'm just giving the next page. So you're kind of oh, a whiz there. You need to slow down for us. Oh, I'm really <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned about the heading. So do you want to talk about headings and how that helps you? Okay. Um, the headings on this page, and the headings tells me uh, what figures are there on the page, uh, what tables are there, and it, it really helps me out. It uh, I don't have to go through the whole page one by one. So I can jump to one page of it and then just see what's there in one figure instead of going through all the block at once. So Sandy is quite an expert user, I would say. Um, it, for some beginner users, you'll, you'll really just see them use like the down arrow key, the tab key sometimes. But what Sandy was doing, she was doing some advanced keystrokes to get to the heading. So you notice that from at the, so we're, we're in a, a different section in the uh, in the document now. So what she's done, what, what's the heading keystroke? It's a control H or control N. Yeah, so, con so with those keystrokes, she, she's able to get to different sections. So in the creation of the document, when you're um, creating a document and you're not using heading labels, um, you're not using the built-in word features to say hi to highlight it, to call it a, a, a specific heading, then she's not going to be able to use any of, the, any of the keystrokes that she knows. She would be going back and doing some really basic things, arrow, like arrowing down. Imagine trying to arrow, arrow through like a 15-page document mm -hmm. and not getting to the sections that you need. And that's you know, part of um, the, the whole yeah. thing about being accessible is in the creation of the document, you need to consider those things so that the end user is able to use their keystrokes to, to get to where they need to go. Yes, if you're looking for a page in, within a document, you can just do Control F and just find, if you have the page number, just put in the page number in the search of Control F there. Do you want to go through and uh, show anything else on this one, like maybe the links? Or? Okay, I'll just go to the links. One, click, click the W, Z, A, D. So this is a link, so I'll just press a space bar or enter to go into the link. W, Z, A, G, 2.0 link. The warning dialog. The document is trying to connect to colon http colon slash slash www.w3.org. Do you trust w3.org? If you trust the site, choose allow. If you do not trust the site, choose block. Remember? If I allow it, it's going to open up the page, whatever I need, whatever the page, whatever document is. And what's, what's your most favorite key show when, when JAWS won't shut up? I just press control to make it to shut up. <laughs> because it talks a lot and it gives me a lot of headache. <laughs> I went to the desktop again and I am on to the third document now. Three, folder view, list view, three dash accessible word dash workbook vision and goal C3 enter. So the third uh, document is just opening up. And I am going to enlarge this document this by all space and pressing X. Menu, page zero. And this is a Word document which is pretty, it's very accessible to me. It's like a friendly document to me by JAWS. So uh, I can enable this document by controlling S. Picture for two point escape. So enable as in, can you explain that? Uh, enable like, uh, when I enable this document, I'm able to type in notes in the document. I'm able to edit, uh, edit, uh, do some editing in the document, and I can uh, do a bunch of stuff 
uh, do a lot of stuff in this document by enabling to edit. Right. So, whereas in the PDF, you you, you won't be able while to in PDF, you won't be able to write, you won't be able to type anything or edit anything. Yeah. So this would be useful if you're in class. You receive the, the electronic copies ahead of time, so mm -hmm. that you can you can um, set it up on your computer and then take notes along the way. Yes. And, and follow along with the instructions. Yes. Okay. Do you want to go through and show some of the keystrokes on this on this document? Um. So I'm just going to the next page. It has this is a document which was being used and at a program which I went to and it has a lot of bunch of stuff. So I'm just doing page down. I press H for headings. K2 vertical tab. E zero. So I was just trying to type in it but unfortunately uh, I think it's just having some problems, some difficulties in it. Technical challenge, we never yes. have those. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you actually were, were um, are you're able to type, so yes. I think the audience was able to see that you're able to type into the document. Yes. So you went into a mode where you can actually add notes and, and things, but yes. if you didn't want to edit, it, it, would be, it would be slightly different in terms of the way that um, Sandy will be navigating through the document. Yes. Um, the final question we have is any tips uh, in working with individuals with vision loss? Um, I know when we were prepping for this uh, presentation, you wanted to, uh, you know, want to know who's the, what's the audience, and um, you were going to give some examples of, uh, you know, how how you can best work with, uh, how we can best work with individuals with vision loss. So working with the vision loss, um, you have to be patient uh, while while explaining something to them on the computer. We just don't point to them. We tell them, okay, go. Uh, tell them, use the up, down, left, right arrows. And you make the document pretty accessible by not having too much spaces or just having simple letters and numbers that they're able to accessible. And when it comes to employment interviews, uh, I've been to, I've been to an interview where an employee was was not rude to me, but the employee walked away by not having the interview with me because I had a vision loss and the person was freaking out and he went away. And he gently told me, uh, thank you for coming in and have a great day without asking any questions. And the second example was I had a document to sign and it wasn't accessible and the person I used my hand and the pen. She hold on to me, and I had to sign, which is not comfort, uh, which is not comfortable by me. So she would have sent the document to me in advance, and I would have signed it in an electronic format. That would be more better than me feeling uncomfortable, feeling nervous, anxious while signing the documents on the spot. I'm just wondering um, how long it took you to fully understand um, and grasp the, uh, the the software that you have to work with. I I went through a lot of different versions of the software. Uh, I this is like the fifth version or the sixth version I'm using on my computer. Uh, I started using JAWS uh, from grade ten. Okay. I was in grade ten where I lost my sight and. My parents took my, a teacher in my class told my parents take my take your kids to the blind school and my like my mom was saying my kid is not blind she can see yeah. and uh, <laughs> and like my mom was sad and and I yeah. went to the rehab for a year and then I was taught how to uh, be an independent blind student or blind kid and it took me a couple of months and years and now I'm. I'm learning every day and I'm growing every day. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sunny, I have a question. I'm, I'm fascinated. How do you find files, your own files on your computer? Like, how do you store? Like, what's your methodology? I save, uh, I do control S or I save as uh, documents on my, my doc or desktop. So they're all in one folder? They're all in one folder. So I have. Uh, I have different classes, so I have all my class files and different documents, and they're all named 
for instance SSW201 that's all the files for group dynamics in one folder. Okay. So when you go to retrieve a file you follow that? I just go to my documents and I uh, press I just press S and the name of the document will come up and I just press enter and if I want to create a new a file, I just do control N into that uh, folder. Mm -hmm. And a new uh, box will pop up for me to name that file, whatever. Right, but you must have hundreds of files saved. Yes, with different names. So I just yeah. have their names because I rely on my memory. Yes. So I do a lot of memory work with my computer. Yeah, thank you. How does it work with the PowerPoint? Is the same with the other programs like PDF or a different program for PowerPoint? Okay. It's the same program for PowerPoint, so it's only that they have a different uh, uh, strokes, a different short, uh, uh, different keys for PowerPoint. Like uh, if I want to open up PowerPoint, I press F5, and I press space bar to go to the next slides of the PowerPoints. And I have to first enable that PowerPoint by doing Control S on it, and then it really works for me. I use PowerPoint, I use Word, and I use PDF to study. What do you need to do at the start of the year with the new, the new class? How long and how would you help that, that faculty member work with you? Uh, when, when, uh, when I go into the class, I, before the class is started, all our accommodation letters are being sent to our professors by the counseling department mm -hmm. at campus. And when we go into the class, the teacher knows ahead of time that uh, this student has a disability. There are different students with a different disability. So when I go in, I go speak to my teacher, hey sir or hey ma'am, my name is Sani and I need this accommodation. So my teachers will tell me, okay. My teachers will ask me, uh, Sani, we know your low vision. Uh, what can we do to help you more? So I said, please, um, Prof, can I have my documents in P in PowerPoint or Word documents that are more accessible to me than you posting them on PDF in PDFs on Blackboard? Mm -hmm. So if the teacher knows how to do that, she'll say, "Okay, fine, no problem. It will take me some time, and you'll get all your documents, whatever you need."